Hey guys, so I am at TwitchCon right now, which makes things a little difficult with uh, regards to making a video about Zer. so pardon the crude setup. I'm recording on my cell phone, which is leaned up against my laptop. Uh, anyway, uh, Zer Week 54 had a actually a very, very good set of items this week, so I did want to talk about them, uh, so let's talk about them. Titans, getting Ruined Wings in Strength, not the worst combo. It's actually pretty good for Sunbreaker Titans if you're uh, running a Melting Point build. Increased rocket or sniper reload speed. That's very very good um, Bonus grenade energy on melee not terrible, especially considering melting point Main bonus gets you more heavy drops and more ammo within those drops. These are fantastic Especially for players without immolation fist if you're running sunbreaker and even if you do have immolation fist running sunbreaker these are still absolutely fantastic especially because if you're not a defender then you don't have to worry about wearing Saint-14, which means you get to wear more of the fun exotics. Um, more heavy means that you're, ma you're at your maximum power more often, dealing more damage. That's great. You know, definitely pick up a pair of these gloves for sure. That's all I really have to say on them. Uh, Hunters, you are getting the Sealed Ahamkara's Grips. These are a new Taken King exotic. Full strength is actually very good considering the bonus on them. Bonus grenade energy on melee hit, that's fine, plays into the bonus. And increased rocket or fusion rifle speed, not bad. Second main bon or sorry, main bonus gets you a second melee uh, attack and a chance to reload your primary weapon on melee hit. I don't have a personal verdict on these just yet, but I'd like to say buy them anyway and then just kind of play around with them. Especially Night Stalkers. Night Stalkers having two melee charges means two smoke bombs, which can be used either offensively or defensively, and smoke bomb is basically almost a flashbang grenade. And flashbang grenade is probably the best PvE grenade in the game. So that's kind of really good. So, yeah, I, I would pick up a pair and, and definitely play around with them in the raid or at least, you know, Nightfall or some higher level activity and, and see how you like them. Warlocks. Sorry, I, keep, I feel like I keep doing this every five seconds. Warlocks, you're getting light beyond Nemesis. I think we all know what the deal is with the Keeper of the Pack exotics by now. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Keeper of the Pack exotics or you're a new player, Keeper of the Pack uh, lets you revive teammates faster, you get revived faster, and you generate an extra orb when using your super. Um, this is basically good to have at some point. It's not the most urgent buy, but everyone should eventually have their Keeper of the Pack exotic uh, armor piece. And finally, Hawkmoon is the weapon of the week. The time has come, Xbox. The time has come. Now, I'll be honest. I have not gotten to play with Year 2 Hawkmoon yet. I have not. I've been very, very busy doing everything else, and so I have not gotten to play with it. Hand cannons did get slapped pretty hard with Patch 2.0. However, they're still pretty good in King's Fall in select areas and still do beastly as hell damage. Hawkmoon is a top tier PvE weapon, or was for all year one content, and while there's definitely more competition for top tier weaponry now, computer please don't fall asleep on me, but there's more competition for top tier weaponry now, I think Hawkmoon is, is still within that category. It puts out absolutely beastly damage, but you just actually need to know your range limits now. It's, it's no more just sniping cross map doing full damage. You need to be much more aware of your positioning. So. If that's something you can start to learn and, and become more conscious of where you're standing, how far away you're standing, and, and how much damage you're actually going to be dealing per shot, then this weapon comes absolutely recommended. However, I understand if you don't want to use it if you have something like Ace of Spades or some sort of Firefly hand cannon. Uh, I think the Legacy Engram was primary weapon for like 30-something coins. Um, the legacy primary weapons for only year one weapons. Only year one, it's for collectors. Uh, it's not gonna give you Necrochasm, it's not gonna give you Mythoclast. So don't buy it trying to get those two weapons. It will skew towards uh, weapons that you don't have in your blueprint vendor. That, it, it will like, kinda like smart decrypt uh, into, into something that you don't have. Hopefully, I don't know if it's a higher chance or it's guaranteed or what, but uh, yeah, that's collectors only. Collectors only on that. Uh, or if you're trying to get a year two weapon, if you get the year one version, you would unlock it in your blueprint vendor. So that's another reason, I guess, to go uh, look for a weapon. Anyway, uh, that's your Zer Week 54. Um, when I get back from TwitchCon, uh, Oryx Guide, 
and Golgoroth guides are gonna get up as soon as possible. I'm actually gonna come back early from TwitchCon today uh, and try and work on the Golgoroth guide and get it up for Saturday. No promises, but I'm trying. Um, Oryx will be up as soon as possible after that. Then I want to do a vendor weapon review, you know, what's the best vendor weapons. Um, and then after that I want to do something on the synergy of Melting Point, Weapons of Light, and Shadow Shot. Uh, like all the bonus damage buffs and, and, and debuffs and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I want to do something on that this week as well. And uh, that's it. So thanks for watching guys. Pardon the, uh, the crappy sound if it was, if it was bad. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.